Hello everyone, uh, this is Jeremy Marin, the existential wine guy. Uh, this is my very first Facebook Live and Instagram Live uh, presentation. So uh, I'm very excited for this and uh, thank you for joining along. We're a couple minutes early, so I'm waiting for a few people to drop on, but I, I thought we'd just get a little started. Um, of course, we have a little wine with us, so we'll, uh, you know, while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and have a sip. Mm. Ah, uh, I am starting this broadcast off with a little Spanish wine, uh, Buscado, a little Tempranillo, it's a 2016, very nice and very light, so uh, we'll wait for a few, few people to jump on and we will uh, see where we go from this. Uh, Mr. Walden, or Mrs. Walden it looks like, uh, has joined, thank you so much. Kitty Gaga on Instagram, thank you so much for watching me today. I really appreciate that. Uh, again, this is my first time doing this. I'm a little nervous, which is why, you know, fine. So uh, in a couple minutes, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, we got eh, maybe one or two more minutes. Uh, more people are joining on. Thank you so much for uh, watching me. Um, as we're starting off, uh, let's give it just one more minute, actually. But... Uh, you know, one of the first things I, I, I want to talk about is uh, why existential wine guy. Why did I start this up, and why did I want to start talking about wine? And uh, we're going to get to that. Uh, we're going to talk a little Joseph Campbell. Uh, we're going to maybe end with another quote as well. I want to make sure that uh, people know that if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to you know type them in. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, they can be about wine. They can be about experience. Or yeah. yeah. Heck, it could be about Star Wars. I, I'm pretty good at that as well. So uh, we're just hitting 5.30 right now. So And, oh, by the way, I'm going to apologize for all the lights going on around here. I have yet to ha uh, set up a, well, a proper setup. So, you know, those things are coming. Uh, so let's talk about existential wine guy. Why that? I've, I've been in the wine business for quite a few years now, and I've had a little, you know, uh, dalliances into different titles. Uh, most recently, it was more wine sales. It was, it was also been um, Tales from the Tasting Room. And with that, I always thought that I would sort of recount some of the really weird and fun and, you know, things that happened to me. Uh, serving wine at various wineries that I've worked at. And um, like so many things before, I, it turns out that I'm really not good at that type of thing. Um, as salacious and fun, and, uh, and I've got great stories for, you know, uh, everyone, it just uh, really wasn't me. So I moved over eventually to Existential Wine Guy because I really am more interested in the experience of wine than the detailing of wine, if that makes any sense. I don't think that anybody, we need another wine critic out there. And while I have a great appreciation for people who can sort of technically break down wine and what they're tasting and the various notes and the history that goes along with that, I am much more, I'm much more interested in the experience of wine, what the wine makes you feel like, how you share wine with your friends and the experience around that. So uh, that is why I moved over to Existential Wine Guide because I have questions and sometimes I get the answer to it and sometimes it takes a bottle of wine to help me uh, get to that answer. Uh, well, let's see, where we wanna do? So why Existential Wine Guide? That's why. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, they can go ahead and uh, you know type them into your Facebook or your Instagram, and I will do my best to answer those. Um, one of the things, one of my heroes and, and, and teachers is Joseph Campbell, and one of the things that he would talk about is that he has a quote that says, "People are not as much." looking for the meaning of life. They are looking for the experience of life. And what does that mean? And to me, that means that we are, we derive meaning from experience and not the other way around. So for example, you can sit there with a bottle of wine and taste it and you're by yourself and you're cozying up to it and whatever you know you get from that bottle of wine and that's your experience. And yet, you could do the same thing with maybe four of your friends and you're sharing that bottle of wine and you're having conversations and you know the things that are the fellowship that kind of surrounds wine and that is a completely different experience as well. All that to say, 
we learn from those experiences. The, the, you know, the experience are what make us, and it's those are the things that make us think. And it's the it's how we uh, create our thought process. It's what adds to our thought process and our belief system and our faiths and things like that. So calling on Joseph Campbell to have that experience, that's something that I'm really big on. Even as I'm working in wine, the wineries that I've worked in in the past, it has always been about the experience and for the experience as much for me as it was for you know, the people that would come in. And it was really easy to do a simple, you know, tasting of three or four wines. And next thing I know that me and the people that are tasting, oh, first of all, we've become fast friends and we've been talking for hours. And the conversations that came uh, from that experience are things that enriched me, if not the actual people tasting. So that is what you're going to see going forward. We're going to talk about experience. We're going to talk about other people's experiences and uh, quotes from various authors and different philosophies and, of course, much more wine. Glenn, my man, thank you for joining. It's very exciting to have you here. He's on Facebook, so a big shout out to you. Uh, actually, it's kind of fun because uh, Glenn and another friend of ours, Richards, in our years and years before, uh, started well, sort of started a small little bod podcast where uh, Glenn was talking about beer, uh, Richard was talking about spirits, and I was talking about wine, and we kind of switch off. So that was kind of the, uh, the uh, first uh, phase of this little experiment, and I'm really glad that Glenn uh, is here uh, to watch me on the first time that I've done this. So thank you so much. Uh, again, a shout out to uh, Kitty Gaga. I appreciate it. Somehow you are watching on both Facebook and Instagram, and man, the, the, the heart's going pitter-patter. So thank you so much for that. If anybody has a question or any anything that you want to talk about wine um, again for me the wine is about the experience not necessarily the technical breakdown and I think one of the things that inhibits us in the wine industry is that we have people who are literally afraid to come up to the wine bar because they think that they need advanced degrees in biochemistry just to have a taste or to ask a question and that saddens me and the reason why is because Wine is for the people. It, it shouldn't have really like moved into this sort of elitist culture that sometimes uh, wine gets wrapped up into. So uh, whenever I have people who come up to me, I, I always look for the, the the new tasters or maybe the young kids who you can tell right away that they've never been in a winery before and they've had that first experience or they're having that first experience. And I do my best to have it just um, an amazing one, uh, one that will allow them to learn and as well as one that will allow them to feel comfortable going into the next spot. So a couple stories, and because me and my friends, you know, we go, we go wine tasting very often. And uh, to be sure, uh, you know, sometimes we're walking in and, you know, you know, short sleeve shirts, our tattoos are showing, and, you know, we get caught up in that sort of uh, elitism that some wineries do have. And, you know, I have friends, I mean, and they're not me because, you know, those guys have money. But me, we walk in and we, you know, I'll spend my rent in wine. I, it's, I, I've done it before. It's not always like the best approach, but, it, but it's happened. But when I'm passionate about something, I'm going to, you know, I'm in it full force. And what happened was we walked into a winery and literally they wouldn't serve us. I mean, it was one of those things like, oh, hey we'll get right back down to you. And the next thing I know, they're helping the old people on the side of the other side of the bar. And I'm like, are, are you kidding me? It's like that scene in Pretty Women when you know she walks in and says, oh, hey, you work on commission? Big mistake. Exactly the same thing. It's like, hey, we're gonna spend a lot of money on this and you completely ignored us. And you've ignored us for no other reason that we look a little scruffy. Um, you know, when the scruffy people come in, I actually go the other way. I actually think, man, if this person is here, then they're really interested in what we have for them. Uh, they're interested in tasting wine. Maybe they're interested in learning about wine. Maybe they don't have any interest at all, but it's my job to go ahead and change their mind about it. And it's really a lot of fun to do that. So again, um, you, this is Jeremy, the existential wine guy. I'm answering questions about wine, some philosophy, 
type things. Uh, the experience of being live, if we want to talk about that, absolutely throw me a question. I would love to hear from you. I know this is the first time for me doing this, so I'm not expecting a whole lot of questions. We're not going to go like into the wee hours as I can when I have wine. Whoa, wait more. Mmm. I'm a huge fan of Spanish wine. But if you do have any questions, I would, again, love to answer those for you. Um, also, for those out there, I am available for private tastings. I do customer experience training for wineries uh, and also breweries and across the board. So you can always check me out at uh, existentialwineguy.com. You can also check me out at jeremymarin.com because it's kind of the same site. I would really appreciate if you do go there, not to laugh too hard at the site. Yes, it's a site in training, and we are constantly adding more and more content to it. Uh, Glenn, thank you. Recommendations for a starter. A fantastic question. Uh, so for me, start. I always like to start off a little bit on the lighter side, and also it depends on the time of year. Right now, I'm in lovely Sacramento, California, and we're pushing like 103 degrees. So as a starter, Let's start with something cold, um, a rosé, icy cold, uh, a sparkling, a uh, sparkling rosé. Absolutely a fantastic choice. One nice thing about um, a sparkling is it also it'll clear up the palate a little bit as well. Uh, so if you're starting off with a little something and you know that you're going to a meal, uh, as a starter, any one of those is always fine. Also, on a day like today, is there anything better than like a really nice sangria? Dry, not super sweet. I've got a great recipe, so you can always uh, you know uh, direct message me uh, for that. But to have a nice rosé that's you know we cut up with some nice fruit thrown over ice is an excellent starter as well. Especially if you're going to be grilling later on. Uh, let's say you're going to do some ribs or some hamburgers or something like that. There's something about a nice uh, dry sangria that moves really nicely into it. Uh, and then when you're going to do something after that, um, grilling, you know, cabernets are always really nice. Uh, I am a big fan of Zinfandel as well. So sometimes uh, a nice uh, drier Zinfandel, not something that has a big uh, fruit bomb at the beginning of it, but something that has a little bit of spice on the end. Uh, absolutely fantastic with uh, things like ribs, you know, any, any meat that you're going to be grilling. Uh, Matt just joined us on Instagram. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. Uh, Matt and I actually did work together a few times. In fact, there's a great story of Matt actually hired me at a winery one time, and it was one of the best interviews I'd ever had. Uh, Matt was having a long, long day. You can tell he was a little bit on the tired side. But we, you know, he, he met me. We had this amazing conversation, and he said, hey, let's go ahead and, you know, taste one or two wines at the bar. And we did. And what was kind of funny because, I um he served me one wine and he you know and of course you know he's testing me out he wants to know what my palate's like he wants to know how I'm going to answer certain questions because he's a fantastic manager so I give him my response on one and he's like hey that's not right and I said well let's give it a try so he actually was fun he opened up the bottle or he had a taste of it I should say and he just said huh and then we went through every single wine at the bar. Yeah, that was like 13 wines, and uh, it, was, it was a good time. Let's put it that way. So one of my favorite interviews that I've ever gone through uh, was with Matt, and he uh, joined us on Instagram. So thanks a lot, Matt. It's uh, good, to, good to see you there. Uh, again, uh, you are hanging out with Jeremy, the existential wine guy, on Instagram Live and on Facebook Live. So uh, thank you for joining me. It's uh, really glad to have. I'm really glad to have everybody here. Um, some other things that we should probably talk about in overall experience. Um, if I can jump to this, uh, today is would be Nelson Mandela's 100th birthday, uh, and from his book Long Walk to Freedom, I'm going to actually read this off the page because I wasn't going to be able to memorize it. Was no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Uh, for me, amazing words um, could not ring more true now than when he first spoke. So if you have any thoughts on that, I would love to hear that as well. Matt uh, just joined. Uh, we have another Matt joining us from Facebook uh, down in El Salvador. My man, thank you so much. It's, uh, I'm glad to have you here. 
Again, Jeremy from Existential Wine Guy, um, and you can always check out me on well on Facebook. On Instagram, you can also uh, check me out at existentialwineguy.com. All right, so what else are we talking about today? Uh, we Previously, for the people who just joined, we were talking about Joseph Campbell a little bit. Uh, again, uh, a, a teacher for me, a hero for me, and I'm going to talk about what we just uh, – I'm going to repeat what I said earlier, that uh, he had a quote that said that – I think people are not looking as much for the meaning of life as the experience of being alive. Uh, again, we talk about experience. We talk about how that changes us and how we derive meaning from experience. So, you know, you can talk about it as your experience of walking up a hill, and you can do that. And then there's another experience of climbing a mountain and how that changes you and how your perspective changes from that point of view. These are things I think about when I'm drinking wine, especially when I'm drinking with, you know, wine with friends. And we have those discussions and our mind kind of, you know, opens up a little bit with it. Uh, again, uh, I'm drinking a wonderful Tempranillo. For those of you who know me, you know I'm a huge fan of Spanish wines. Uh, this is the uh, Buscato. This is a really easy one. I was uh, actually looking for a wine that uh, when I was visiting Matt down in El Salvador, uh, I, El Salvador being a, uh, a country that has absolutely no wine unless you're buying it at a store. There's, it's not a, a wine-producing uh, country. And of all things, we were walking into, I think, a um, – uh, it was a, a, their version of a Costco, and uh, we were running around. And I just picked up a, a couple of bottles of wine, and one of them uh, it was a, a Spanish one, and it just knocked me out. I mean, I was – don't you love that when you have that little experience when you walk into a store, and maybe you're unsure about the wine that you're buying because at this point sometimes you were absolutely judging a book by its cover. Found this wine, and it just – you know, I bought a couple of bottles of it too. It just didn't fail. Every time we opened it up, it was just wonderful. It seemed to complement every single meal. Again, uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding wine, um, food, philosophy, we were talking about Star, you know, Star Wars as well, or the Avengers movie, which knocked me out. It was absolutely so good. Absolutely would love to hear your, uh, your thoughts on it. Also, I'd love to hear any thoughts you have on my Joseph Campbell quote. Uh, Joseph Campbell was uh, just the world's leading mythologist, and he was uh, you know, someone who really took this idea that you can look around at, at mythology and apply it to present day. And uh, I've read most of everything that he's written. There's a couple books out there I haven't gotten to yet, but uh, they're next on the list. So I'm looking around here, uh, both uh, at Instagram and at Facebook. Uh, and also tell me if you can hear me well. I'd also, you know, yes, I know this, uh, this light over here is just absolutely brutal. Uh, if you're on Facebook. On Instagram, it's really not so bad. Um, so we'll have to check that out next time. We'll come up with a better setup. Salut. Mm. Um, and for those of you who are uh, working in wineries or working in the wine industry, again, a reminder, I am available for overall customer experience training for employees, social media, uh, social media branding, uh, as well as just uh, creating content calendars and Actually, not doing it for you as much, but, at, but definitely training your staff so they can work better for you. So you can always check me out uh, at jeremymarin.com. You can check me out at existentialwineguy.com. Uh, with that, if you have any notes on what you would like to hear from me, because, yeah, you know, I have a lot of uh, – experience in the training aspect and the technical aspect of, you know, running a, a tasting room. Uh, but sometimes you don't want to hear that. Sometimes you're actually much more about uh, the silly things that go on. Uh, I have a piece that's going to be posted tomorrow about how old women love to fondle my tattoos. Uh, it's a weird thing to be, you know, felt up by Nana. It's kind of like that scene in 16 Candles. Uh, it's crazy. But these things do happen. Uh, so I'll be writing a little bit more about those type of experience experiences and posting them up on my website as well. Uh, that blog is sorely needed of attention and you're going to see more content uh, posted there as well. 
just checking around, making sure because I'm an old guy. Oh my gosh, Nicole, so good to see you on uh, Facebook. Been a long time. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us again. I'm the existential wine guy, and I'm answering questions about wine, the experience of wine, and not just that. You know, I've really drifted, and I've really been into spirits lately as well. And I've always been a craft beer guy. And fortunately, I live in Sacramento, and the craft beer scene here is absolutely insane. Uh, it seems like there's new ones opening up all, all the time. What you think would be a saturated market here in Sacramento, you were starting to see. Um, you know, uh, breweries actually expand to multiple locations and you couldn't be happier. I've got some friends over at Solid Ground up in uh, Diamond, uh, Diamond Springs. Uh, I've got some friends down now at um, Device Brewing. They just opened up in the Ice Blocks. Know a couple of the guys there and they've been absolutely fantastic. I was there at their opening and uh, what they're pouring was just absolutely wonderful. And, you know, it's just good guys. And this one thing that I also love about our industry, uh, whether it be wine, spirits, or you know, or beer, is that the people who are part of it are they're real artisans, and they are in the for the most part the, some of the nicest and most pleasant people out there, and they're there because they are passionate about their craft and they're doing just amazing things with it. So we've got oh gosh we've got oh I've gone I said I wouldn't go more than twenty minutes on this and we're right pushing right up on that. So if anybody does have any. Um, Oh gosh. So Glenn had just asked me uh, what was the funniest closing, uh, closing or the funniest closing a tasting room moment. I've had some awkward ones. I won't lie. Um, and some of them are, may not necessarily be um, uh, suitable for broadcast. Uh, I can say that uh, I was, what's the right way to put this? propositioned very loudly with intense description of what would ensue should things go her way. Awkward for a married guy to hear that out loud at such great volume, especially when you're a guy who like couldn't get a date in high school, and then all of a sudden uh, this form of... Um, Physical closeness was at a very large volume. Yeah, people stared. It was that was probably one of uh, the most uh, embarrassing ones. Uh, great for the ego, by the way. And you know, did it matter that she was like seventy years old? Not at all. I'm not an ageist. So, uh, Glenn, there was that. Uh, we've had so many more. Uh, just, I, I think that one of the things I love about another thing I love about the industry itself is it's like we had a lot of fun. You know, it, it was, you know, yes, you'd close down, you'd have a long day, uh, but, you know, working behind the wine bar, uh, you know, I say this a lot, if, if you can't have fun doing that job, then, like, you should go into advertising or maybe insurance, uh, one of those type of things where you're not really expected to have a lot of fun. But, you know, some of the great moments was just sitting back, and I remember working at a winery, uh, Dewey Vigne, and Ken Musso, who's an extraordinary winemaker, you know, he always, he would have a lot of fun with it. And he would come in with, like, a bottle of wine in a bag that you couldn't see what it was, and he would blind taste us and say, hey, what is it? It keeps you on your toes. So it, it really is a lot of fun. Uh, we are getting to the end of the time. I want to thank everybody for coming, for coming out and watching the, you know, the inaugural uh, Facebook Live and Instagram Live of the Existential Wine Guy. I'm going to be doing this uh, just about every Wednesday, every, uh, we'll call it Wine Wednesday at 5.30. And if you'd like, you can definitely uh, message me uh, if you have any questions. I can address those and, or even like research them in some cases, uh, depending on what they are. Again, you can find me at jeremymarin.com. You can find me at existentialwineguy.com. And definitely, you've probably found me on Facebook and or Instagram. But, uh, you know, if you like what I'm doing, uh, you'll send me a message. If you don't like what I'm doing, yeah, I probably want to hear that too. So uh, again, everybody, thank you for coming out. I really appreciate you coming out and saying hi. And uh, for me, this has been an absolute blast. I will see you next week. Thank you so much. How do you stop this? Oh, that's it. <laughs>